Number 4. Truman, Betharam. In the early 1950s, there was a large wave of people all over the world who reported contact with alien beings. Truman Bertharam, a mechanic and spiritual advisor, was one of the first of these contactees who had their encounters publicized in the media. Truman's first encounter with extraterrestrials took place in July of 1952. After finishing work for the day, Truman decided to head to Mormon Mesa, Nevada, to look for seashells. He had heard that long ago the ocean had covered the area and had left behind deposits of seashells in the hilltops. After searching for about an hour, he decided to take a nap in his truck. He was awoken some time later by the voices of eight small beings with olive skin and dark hair who were clustered around his truck. Nearby, he saw a 300-foot-wide flying saucer hovering soundlessly above the ground. The aliens, who spoke English, told him that their homes were castles in a faraway land, and took him aboard their ship, where he met their captain, the voluptuous Aura Rains, who was a normal-sized, human-looking woman who Truman described as having Latin features. Aura told him that they had come from the planet Clarion, which was permanently hidden from Earth behind the moon. Clarion was free of disease, crime, politicians, and had a matriarchal society. She said that Mars was also inhabited and had an atmosphere similar to that of Earth's. Over the next few months, Truman had a further ten meetings with Captain Rains. She sometimes materialized in his bedroom which upset his wife. Truman wrote several books detailing his meetings with Rains and describing the planet Clarion and its people. He also made it known that Rains had asked him to create a place of learning for those who were interested in extraterrestrial intelligent life, and he subsequently founded the Sanctuary of Thought, a philosophical group, near Prescott, Arizona. Prior to his death in 1969, Truman continued to write about his experiences, despite the fact that after their 11 meetings in 1952, he never made contact with Aura Rains again. He claimed to have seen her once more, sitting in a restaurant in Glendale, Arizona, but when he spoke to her, she claimed not to know him. Number 3. Orfeo Angelucci Orfeo was born in Trenton, New Jersey in 1912. For most of his life, he suffered from anxiety, phobias, and feelings of inadequacy. He was terrified of thunderstorms, so in 1948, he moved to California because he had heard that thunderstorms were rare there, and he took a job on the assembly line of a Lockheed aircraft factory in Burbank. On May 24, 1952, Orfeo was at work when he began to feel anxious and ill. Leaving work at 2.30 a.m., he was driving home when he noticed an unusual red light in the sky, which seemed to be following him. Suddenly, he heard a voice telling him not to be afraid, and to stop his car and get out. Pulling over next to a field, Orfeo obeyed the voice. The voice reminded him of an unusual experience he'd had six years before. In 1946, while still living in New Jersey, Orfeo had conducted an experiment to see if high altitudes had any effect on mold. He attached several mold cultures to a weather balloon and sent it up into the air. He lost sight of the balloon, and while looking for it, he saw a strange craft in the sky. The voice, who referred to his species as Space Brothers, told Orfeo that the object he had saw was them, and that they had been observing him since that time. Next, a crystal cup containing a golden, bubbling liquid materialized on his car's fender, and he was commanded to drink it, which he did, and felt great. Next, a video screen materialized in the air in front of him, on which he saw an attractive man and woman. They spoke to him telepathically, and told him that they had no need for spacecraft, but chose to manifest UFOs so that humans could perceive them and that they were speaking to him from a mothership in Earth's orbit. The screen then disappeared, 
leaving Orfeo very confused. Two months later in July, he came upon a UFO parked under a freeway overpass and was telepathically invited to step inside. He was taken up into space and given a discourse on the Space Brothers' philosophy, which included a musical rendition of the Lord's Prayer and ended with Orfeo being bathed in a glowing white light in which he knew the mystery of life. Over the coming months and years, he claimed many more encounters with the Space Brothers, who told him of a coming new age and explained that he had been a Space Brother named Neptune in a previous life. He visited their planet, on which he said that you could be other people, and they could be you, and he met Jesus, who told him that he too was a space brother. He was also warned that a great accident could potentially destroy the Earth in 1986. Orfeo wrote several books detailing his meeting with the space brothers. The noted psychologist and philosopher Carl Jung was among Orfeo's fans, and he wrote about Orfeo in his own book, Flying Saucers, published in 1959. Orfeo Angelucci died in 1993 at the age of 81, perhaps rejoining with his space brothers. Number 2. Aladino Felix Aladino Felix was a Brazilian man who first claimed, like Orfeo Angelucci and Truman Betharam, to have made contact with aliens in 1952. While hiking in the woods near Piranha, he came across a UFO and was invited on board, where he met with an alien whom he referred to as the Captain. The Captain promised he would visit him again, and several months later he made good on his word, showing up at Felix's home. The two talked for several hours, during which the captain convinced the formerly atheist Felix that God did exist, told him that gravity did not exist, and that Einstein's theory of relativity was wrong. He was warned that mankind must learn to live in greater harmony with nature, and said that the effects of atomic bomb testing would lead to changes in the Earth's atmosphere, which would cause earthquakes, strange diseases, and maniacs running wild in the streets. He was also told that sometime before the year 2000, a second sun would join our solar system. Felix's aliens were completely human in appearance, and most had blonde hair and green eyes. The captain came from Ganymede, a moon of Jupiter, but he told Felix that many planets were inhabited by humanoid aliens, and that many of these alien humans lived on Earth, where they blended into human society. By 1965, Felix began to make predictions, which unlike the earlier predictions about second suns, proved to be shockingly accurate. He first predicted that flooding would take place in Brazil, and in early 1966, the heaviest rains in 80 years caused flash floods in Rio de Janeiro, which killed 400 people. That same year, he predicted that a Russian cosmonaut would die on a mission, and in April of the following year, Vladimir Komarov was killed during re-entry when his space capsule's parachute failed. In 1967, in front of a televised audience, he predicted the assassinations of both Martin Luther King Jr. and Robert Kennedy, both of which took place the following year. In 1968, Felix predicted a wave of terrorist attacks in Brazil. He was again proven correct, and 18 men were eventually captured and charged with offenses ranging from bank robbery, to bombings, to plotting to assassinate top government officials. What happened next was even more shocking than Felix's predictions. The men all told police that the leader of their group was none other than Felix himself. Arrested and brought to trial, Felix claimed that he was expediting the aliens' planned takeover of Earth and warned that his arrest would lead to retaliation from his friends from space. He was judged to be dangerously mentally ill and committed to an asylum. In his later life, he recanted much of his stories of alien encounters, eventually claiming that he had never met any aliens at all. He died in 2004 at the age of 99. Number 1. Howard Menger 
Howard Menger came late to the 1950s contact D-wave, first reporting several UFO sightings and later contact with alien beings in 1956. However, chronologically, he had one of the earliest claimed extraterrestrial encounters. He told of how, in 1932, at the age of eight, he had met an alien in the woods near his home in New Jersey. The alien was a beautiful, curvaceous blonde woman in a skin-tight suit whom he met sitting on a rock, and she spoke to him about philosophy. Menger's aliens came from Venus, Mars, and Saturn. He was given a ride in a UFO to the moon, and similar to Orfeo Angelucci, was told that he had been an alien from Saturn in a previous life. Unlike the other contactees on this list, Menger also claimed to have photographic and video proof to back up his claims. On screen now is a photo which Menger claimed depicts a Venetian standing in front of its spacecraft. He also claimed to have shot video of a UFO landing and several aliens emerging from it, but he said that this video was confiscated by the FBI. Menger also released an album titled Authentic Music from Another Planet, in which he played music which he claimed was composed by an alien from Saturn. Menger was interviewed many times about his claims, and one reporter who interviewed him was Connie Weber, an attractive blonde who, unlike many members of the media, seemed to genuinely believe his claims. Although he was married and had two children, Menger began an affair with Connie. Eventually, he divorced his wife and married her. Menger at first suspected that Connie was the reincarnated sister of the alien he had met as a child, but both he and Connie would later claim that she was in fact a reincarnated Venetian. On screen now is a photo which depicts Menger and Connie with a claimed Venetian friend. In the 60s and 70s, Menger and Connie backed away from the alien contactee scene, going as far as to recant many of their claims. At one point, Menger implied that the whole thing was in fact a CIA psyop. Another time, he claimed that he had been hired by the government in the 60s to work on developing a spacecraft. By the 1980s, the Mengers had largely disappeared from the public eye. In the 1990s, Menger again began to make public appearances and claimed that all of his original stories from the 50s were true. He said the reason he had recanted many of his claims was due to threats he had received, claiming he was harassed by mafia-like men and had gone as far to arm himself with a semi-automatic pistol. There is dispute as to whether Menger stood by the authenticity of his alien photos at this time. Some sources claim he admitted he had faked the photos to lend credibility to his claims, while others state he continued to insist they were real. Both he and Connie continued to appear at UFO conventions into the early 2000s. Howard Menger died in 2009. Thanks for watching this video. Hopefully you found it interesting. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe and check back often for new content.